What's up, guys? It's Mike Frank with Berkshire Hathaway, Frank Oliver and Company, coming to you again, super excited to be coming into the holiday season. And I am in the spirit. Although you can't tell, my little reindeer guy and I are ready for entertaining. So we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about 10 designer tips to attract and entertain in your spaces. First things first, clean, right? We all know the three D's of listing your home, right? We'll talk about those another time, but there's three C's of entertaining, which is clean, clean, and more clean. Surprise, surprise. Especially the areas that people are gonna be trafficking through. So places that people don't think about are like your bathroom, right? Or your bedroom. People are gonna come into your bedroom for different things, and we're gonna talk about why not to do that, but um, certainly clean your bathroom. Get it free of toiletries and debris. Anything that's not necessary for a consumer to see, anything that's not necessary for your friends to see, get it out of the way, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about what we do with all those things, where we're gonna take them, where we're gonna put them. Certainly closets and containers and storage bins are great, but also think about this. Ask your neighbors to store a couple containers while you're having people over for the holidays, especially if you're having people for an extended stay. People are staying at your house for a couple of days, or weeks, you want to make sure that that space is entertaining for them and not cluttered with your own clutter. So maybe asking your neighbors or putting it in a garage is a great place for you to declutter your own stuff. Second thing, be strategic about your menu. Something that a lot of people forget is how to plan out a menu. So we have a couple friends that are caterers and if you need a personal chef, we have those people too. They can always build your menu and set you up for success. But the thing to keep in mind is how about we make some small starters that are just cold something that you might be able to make hours in advance that you could put in the fridge and you could serve while you're preparing the other food. A lot of people forget that they only have one oven or maybe they have two, but they realize how many things are going in the oven at the same time at different temperatures. It's a lot of management. So be strategic about your menu. You wanna make sure that you prep, prep, and prep some more, right? Now, speaking of the kitchen, we wanna make sure that we use all of our counter space. If you guys have been to my house, if you guys know anything about me, I hate having stuff on the counter. I hate the clutter. All these little appliances that we have, oh, our French press, oh, our coffee maker, and while we're at it, the coffee grinder, these things don't need to be out when it's time to entertain. The coffee maker should be somewhere else at a designated coffee station, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but, Make sure you have your counters free and clear for spaces for things like uh, platters and trays, things that are gonna be used to actually entertain. And if you go the Martha Stewart way, you're actually gonna be using your counters as your platter, so you wanna make sure that they're super, uh, super, super clean anyway. Now, the fourth thing we're gonna talk about is designating a place for your coats and your bags. And so commonly, we use the second bedroom or the third bedroom as the place for all the coats. So go take it into the bedroom and everybody tosses their coats one on top of another and it gets cluttery. It's ridiculous and you shouldn't have to go digging through other people's stuff to find your jacket when you're half toasted to the wind and trying to get home, right? We wanna make sure that we provide an experience for them, someplace to hang up their jackets. Now, if all of your jackets are taking up your coat closet, perhaps we declutter by taking them out, putting them in a bin, and taking them to the neighbor's house, right? We wanna make sure that we create an opportunity for guests to dump their coats and bags and it doesn't become a priority for them of where to put it, where to find it, taking 20 minutes to get their jacket on their way out, right? Managing the traffic, managing the traffic flow of your house. Sometimes people don't have their house set up really to entertain. They're set up for the four or six of them on a routine basis. Maybe they entertain eight on a regular time, but now it's the holiday season. You're gonna be entertaining extended family, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, right? There's gonna be a lot of people coming through your home, so maybe you wanna move your furniture to manage the traffic and not only having the furniture set up to manage the traffic, but also perhaps having your things spread around the room. Perhaps we put the bar over in the living room, we put the food in the kitchen and we put all the entertaining into the dining room or the living area where we can have people spread doing different things in different spaces. So keeping your guests from congregating in one area is gonna allow that flow to really happen a little bit more naturally. Now, something a lot of people think about but they don't really know how to solve it is seating. You're used to seating six or eight at a max. Your dining room table probably doesn't sit 16, or in my family, 36. Dining room table only sits six or eight. So sometimes people wanna know how to maximize their seating spaces. So there's obvious ones like using an extra couch or a bench or folding chairs, but also things like your piano bench. What if you have a small makeup bench up in your master bedroom, you bring that down and utilize that space as a seating area for one or two or more. Create opportunities for people to sit outside, expanding your living area, create heating elements for them to utilize those spaces. And so maybe think about utilizing things that you wouldn't every day use. For example, a folding table would not be in your everyday living. 
But there's easy ways if you go to the dollar store, right? Live and, and <laughs> Allison go to the dollar store every week, right? Go to the dollar store and get a couple tablecloths. Get a style, get a design going and expand them over top of your folding tables, over top of your uh, coffee tables and create an environment for people that they know that they're at an event. Something that was meaningful for you that you put thought into. Speaking of decor, we want to keep it as simple as possible. There's a lot of things that you can do to really separate spaces. For example, if we brought this large, ridiculous centerpiece into the center of our table, I wouldn't really be able to talk to you very well, especially if we were sitting, right? While we're eating, nonetheless. Perhaps we could take small candles, put three or four of them on top of the table, just a nice little votive, something to create an atmosphere and also create a style and a decor for our environment. If we spread candles out around the room, as long as they don't smell like 37 different things, we have a continuous continuity to our design. And so that's something that a lot of people forget. We want to create the opportunity for people to feel like they're at home, not feel like they're at someone else's home. Speaking of which, we're going to create an ambiance. That's number eight. We're going to create an ambiance by utilizing lighting, by utilizing music, by utilizing smells and sounds. The things that people want to feel when they're coming to a holiday party. A gathering of family is the opportunity to show off your spaces and you should be proud of what you have. So spend some time putting together a music playlist or in my case, we're going to hire somebody else to do it because I hate the music. But make sure you have that thought. Experiment with different lighting things. Uh, one that I love is spreading a rope light. You know, old school rope light. Spread it around, around the back of the couch. Give it some light to the back of the wall. You could change the colors. You could change the design. Many of them are controlled by a remote at this point in time. So you could change it on the hour just to be fun and shifty. Create the opportunity for people to feel like they're in a warm, fun environment. And they're going to love and come back to you year over year. Even though they are your family, they don't necessarily have to love the experience. We want to give them the experience that they can love. How about this one? Improvise. Improvise with everything, with centerpieces, with tables, with chairs, with spaces to entertain, with the sights and the sounds and the smells. Improvise, create opportunity. When somebody walks in with something that's totally, completely ornate, you don't want to just throw it into the middle of your buffet. Perhaps you create a dining station on the fly. Improvise, create opportunity for yourself to use a makeshift space as a permanent space. One that I love is take all the books off of your center shelf of your bookshelf. Put them elsewhere, not onto other shelves because that's going to look cluttery. Put them elsewhere, under the couch or under other spaces and use that center shelf of your bookshelf as your bar. Maybe put it up two steps higher so the little kids can't get to it, but creating an opportunity for people to travel, again, using the room and the flow of the spaces. Improvising can really create a great atmosphere for people. And use the things that you never try. Try this one for size. Create an ice tray, go to the dollar store, pick up some ice trays, right? Create an ice tray, throw a couple berries in your ices. Ices, ice, ice plural, hmm? is that right? Ice is plural. Ice is plural, <laughs> ice is already plural. Okay, so throw your berries in your ice, plural, right? Uh, and you're gonna create a cute little look, whether you're making sangria or somebody's just having a simple cocktail or maybe they're just having juice and they wanna have fun. Throwing berries into your ice cubes is gonna create something really, really cute. Improvise something that you've never tried before and family's gonna love it. They're gonna lush over the opportunity and they're gonna lush over the opportunity to sit outside, creating something that they don't normally do in December in Baltimore when it's chilly. We're gonna create the opportunity to escape cabin fever. For the last 12 months, people have been re-entering the world after 12 months of complete uncertainty. Create the opportunity for them to embrace this opportunity. They don't know what they don't know. That's our job as realtors is to create something where we don't know what we don't know. It's ridiculous, but we want to create the opportunity for people to feel a little bit more welcome when they come into our homes. And for you guys, our mission is to create an opportunity where you love where you live. And tremendously, this is the opportunity to show that off to your family for the first time in two seasons. And I'm so thankful to be able to share with you guys all the time. Look forward to seeing you guys real soon. And we're going to have some great tips as we come into the holidays. Can't wait to get into 2022 and share with you some goals that we have coming up. Anyway, if you haven't already, you can always reach us by PM or DM. Or if you haven't, subscribe to the link below and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for weekly content. Also, check out our social media pages. The links are in the description below. See you next week.